We're doing cloning. Cloning. Notes. I'm gonna wash my tooth. So how's it going, Ava? You doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, we just need to do some shopping as soon as uh, we can get out of the driveway. <laughs> We yeah, still have ice luckily, around my car. Yeah, luckily the, the roads are almost like uh, ice free now, like on the way here. Yeah. Kind of yeah. It's just all in the shaded areas. Like when I was pulling my car out, just all this uh, ice everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I had to cancel a meeting at Capel Center yesterday because. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you said. Yeah, we moved it to Jan uh, February 18th. So. Cool. Cool. So that's the day before the pass, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to be so busy okay. running around. So let's um, spray the alcohol and I'll blow. So we're spraying alcohol. Yeah. Just so it's going to pass the glow a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys how to make an agar to agar transfer. So you're using isopropyl? Yeah, yeah, 70%. 70%, that's good. That's what I used in the classroom for DNA stuff. Yeah, it's better than like, some people use 90, but it's less effective just because there's less water. And it doesn't yeah. work that well. So, yeah, you don't need 90%. How to do agar to agar transfers? So basically, we're gonna take. A, can you see this? Yes. So we're gonna take a tiny piece of the mycelium on this plate and put it uh -huh. on a different plate, just so to expand the culture. Cool. So you see how far to make. It's pretty cool just to make, yeah. make those. Yeah. Uh, what What did you extract from there? Um, with a scalpel. Yeah, you got a scalpel. Yeah. So I have a. Scalpel here. Scalpel. You can also use like this little hobby knife you can get at Walmart or whatever. This little oh, hobby yeah. knife, but I have an actual like scalpel you can order online. Mm -hmm. it should be like two dollars or something like that. Cool. cool. So, okay. So let me get some place out. This I'm not gonna explain much just because. We're gonna have the plates like all wrapped up, like individual plates that wrapped sure. up with it, so they can use it easier. Now, what you saw about uh, the recipe for the agar? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll write it on the PowerPoint. I'm having a hard time hearing you, so I don't know if. Not big. Well, that's yeah. gonna be an issue when we get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we might have to use uh, somebody else's phone, kind of how we did with yeah. uh, uh, Stacy that suggested that at the last class. Yeah, uh, I think maybe Ethan we, knows maybe, how to do that. So we'll... we, we, we even should consider investing in some uh, audio equipment. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let me go over like how the equipment making this. I showed you the scalpels, the knives. Mm -hmm. and then we have the, of course, the agar plates, which I, I made a while ago. And now I, I'm going to show, um, put the recipe on the PowerPoint. And then, of course, you have the culture that you're going to, that you're going to take a transfer from. Mm -hmm. which is, uh, like that. And they're they're going to have access to this to use it during the class. So, and then what else? Um, I also have this little torch just to like sterilize the scalpel whenever you take transfers because it has to be sterile. So I'm gonna bring this to the mm -hmm. class. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess uh, uh, we don't have Bunsen burners. Yeah, I have this fancy little um, 
what do you call it? Like um, this this coil here, is it an induction coil? So mm -hmm. it's gonna heat up when you put your scalpel through. It's gonna sterilize it just because it's you know some weird science stuff that does that. It's gonna heat up mm -hmm. the scalpel and it's gonna be sterile. So I'm gonna bring this out as well because we're gonna yeah. have two stations just so it's you know it takes less time for like 20 people to go through the lab. Mm -hmm. And then one more thing that we're gonna use is just this little uh, cling wrap that I cut into a you know handheld size, just because mm -hmm. we have to wrap the plates because these plates are vented. So if they're not wrapped, um, mold and bacteria from the air can get inside. So every mm -hmm. time you, you do it, you have to wrap it. So, right. Yeah. All right, so we're almost ready to, I'm gonna show you how I do my, my you, you can see right, Eva? Yeah, I can see. Uh, can you I'm see me to, pretty well? I see half of half of it. I see me. I'm trying to make it just to see you. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. So now when it's unwrapped, everything has to be still. So that's why it's in front of the hood. Right. But under the steel air box, it's, it's gonna be fine. All right. Have you done like architecture before? Yeah. yeah. So you know how to do it. Is this the wild game? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I only caught back that I can't hear very well. Uh -oh. Okay. All right. Well. So this is a wild Ganoderma right here. And this is an agar plate. Cool. This is one unwrap. Oh. Yeah, we, we can unwrap it after we do. Oh, okay. I like to have oh, yeah, gotcha. it. Okay. Uh, can you see this other one? All right. Yeah, All right. Right. there we go. Okay. okay. So, can you hear pretty well? Can you hear Ava? Can you hear? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out why I'm not getting the big screen. I'm only getting a half screen, so I'm not seeing it as well. But uh, let's see, view. Huh, it says I'm on full screen. So anyway, let's see. Okay. There. Okay. Okay, so sterilizing the scalp with the okay. suction coil. That's pretty cool. So you can see it's heating up. I mean, I think everyone can see it, but it's, it's just heating, like we're just heating up the scalpel just to make it stale. Okay. And you'll have enough scalpels for the class? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have two, just because we're gonna, only gonna have two, like still air boxes. Uh-huh. And then they're okay, gonna Okay, so people will take turns. Yeah, if we can okay. have like 20 air <laughs> boxes there. So I'm just gonna let it cool for like maybe 10 to 20 seconds. And it, uh -huh. it cools faster in front of the hood just because the wind, wind blowing on it. But mm -hmm. like the steel box takes a while longer. Right. And then I, I'm going to cool my scalpel in the sterile agar dish that I made. Just mm -hmm. going to do that. Just so it's not burning our cultures. And I'm going to pick up my blue eyes culture and just cut like a triangle, but a square, I mean. You can do whatever shape you want, but I find a uh, square is easiest. Cool. Cool. Okay, see. So just like that. Yeah. Can you see it? This is the piece that. Yeah. I can see it. So we've got a I'm triangle gonna, or a square. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick it up like that. So now it's on your scalpel, and then. I'm just going to put it on a new plate. Like that. It's kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard to get off. And then that's done. And I'm going to wrap the plate with this. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find. And things. I'm having trouble. And we can help pay for materials if you need to buy more, you know, more materials. 
Yeah, that's what I told him. Yeah. Be embarrassing for him to yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the, you know, you guys are paying me 25 an hour, so that's, that's enough to cover everything. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to find it. You can, can you find it? <laughs> the opening to it. We have an issue it's with hard that. with gloves on. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, so we just so we we found the little oh she she gone. There's a way for it. Oh, okay. All right. So we have this now. We're just gonna wrap it around mm -hmm. the plate twice. Mm -hmm. Do that. <laughs> Sometimes it this happens. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not cut very well. I'll fix it before it stops. Right, and then just make sure it's tight. And we're just gonna. Cool. We're just gonna label it. Um, Let me get my marker. So that one was the blue oyster. And then, and then this one is a wild Ganoderma that we found. Um, I think it was a few months ago, maybe. Uh, it's the first foray. First foray, yeah, yeah. So. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. So people have different. Yeah, I ways remember of you. Yeah. Of labeling their plates, but I like to do. Um, I just put the the common name because I don't want to bother with mm -hmm. <laughs> the scientific name. It's a blue oyster. And then the date is two five, and then the transfer number it's gonna be T two transfer number two. Right, she. Oh, blue because, oyster. Because this plate was transfer number one, um, so this new plate is gonna be transfer number two. So that, that's how you do the right. label your plates. And then I'm gonna after that I'm gonna wrap up the the main plate, but since Sebastian's gonna do it, I'm just gonna leave it unwrapped. And that's that's basically it. That's that's mostly what I'm going to show them. And that's also one thing um, I'm going to show them how to do. I'm going to show them how to do uh, an agar to plane uh, to grain transfer. So it's the it's the same thing, but instead of transferring to another agar plate, you're going to put it to grain. So this is how it looks like. You see how that there's an agar piece piece in there. Yeah. What kind yes. of grain are you using? Is that using, brown rice? I'm, I'm using whole wheat, whole wheat berries. Whole wheat. Yeah, whole wheat. You can yeah. use like whole oats. You can use, you know, rye berries. You can use a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. All right, now your turn, man. I'm excited. So let me explain to you, like, the main thing is to not put anything dirty over anything sterile. So something mm -hmm. sterile is inside this, this uh, agar plate is sterile. So you don't want like your, when it's open, you want your like fingers or your like arm or anything over it. Mm -hmm. Only the, the scalpel that's sterile, you're gonna put over the plate. Right. So just let it cool for a little bit. Maybe like. Can you see it, Ava? Can you see and hear me pretty well? Reason. I think I'll lose the connection. Green. And I can't see why. Uh, okay. There you go. You want to take something else? Oh, no, we, we can do that. You, you do that first. Uh, be gentle with it. Well, yeah, that's fine. Just stab it a little bit with your knife so it sticks. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that shit's not open. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to put it right on the auger. Yeah. There you go. That's fine. Just, yeah. <laughs> it probably, it probably will. <laughs> it probably contaminate. So, what type of auger are you using? I'm using um malt extract 
yeast agar. A malt extract yeast agar. Okay. Yeah, which is the So we could. Um, yeah, you can wrap it so you can get some practice. Wrap, wrap the new plate first because that's what we worry about more than the other plate. So while, while he's doing that, we're going to need a, a drop cloth to put underneath all of our lab equipment and okay. um, maybe some sort of wrap that goes over the tables as well. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to grab some uh, picnic tables. Yeah. For okay. Right. Oh, it should be good. Well, yeah. That's good. This label. What is two five T two T two. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, kind of backwards. Uh-huh. <laughs> and yeah. You want to wrap this one or um yeah, you can wrap it. Let's just grab it too. Yeah, this one's still wrap. I'm, I'm gonna use this one to show you how to do uh aga to grain. So we can show that. So that one already has mycelium growing in it, the agar to This one right here? Yeah, that looks good. This one is, yeah, it's it's pretty much uh, fully colonized. Okay. And then I keep it in my fridge, so they last a few months, like yeah. six, six months. Nice, mm -hmm. cool, dark spot. Yeah. Yep, and that's done. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's just like, just yeah, you just put it right there. So, so the main thing is like, they're not gonna get it perfect the first time they do it. Right. But hopefully they get something to take over and see if they contaminate their stuff. Yeah. That's gonna be exciting <laughs> for them, I guess. Right. Yeah. So, so here, I'm gonna show you how to do, um, oops. Uh, I got the grain transfer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this would be filled with um, sterilized grain, like I showed you, but since I don't have that made, so I'm just gonna use an empty empty bottle. So this is just like a mason jar with a, a plastic lid that I bought at Walmart. How do you sterilize your grain? You use a pressure cooker, like it has to be, to be ran at 15 PSI for two hours to sterilize the grain. You can also buy the grains off sterile already, but I make my own grain. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the ones that they sell in the pre-made bags are really rather expensive. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, like a, a, bag, a bag of wheat, it's like, it's like 13 mm -hmm. bucks, 40 pounds. And those bags are selling like what, like 10 bucks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you how to make an agar grain transfer. So that the Gan demo took off pretty well on the agar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was kind of dirty first, first few like transfers. Right. Right. You know, right. I got it. What about that Perotis? Uh, yeah, it's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too dirty for me. Okay. So, I mean, they they I'm gonna bring like two jars, like two grain jars, just so like. They all get a chance to do it. It's gonna be like a bunch of species in the same jar. It's not gonna work out, but it's just something to show them that they can do, you know. So with this, mm -hmm. I like to right. loosen the lid so I can open it up with one hand, like that. Switch back on. Because we're gonna do so I'm just gonna st sterilize my scalpel again. So 
waiting for it to cool. Ah, no, I'm not. Yeah, because I have an egg. So we're just gonna cut a, a bigger, like triangle or square, just because we got, we're trying to inoculate like a whole jar of ring. So it needs more mycelium in there for it to work well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of tough because it's kind of doing my, the mycelium so hard, yeah. Yeah. I think they're trying to get leather out of the game. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very strong. So it's a, it's a bigger square. If you can, can you see it? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, big, a bigger, bigger square. square. Yeah, compared to the last one they did. You see the bigger square? Yeah, that's pretty big. So we're just gonna try to get it. Super hard to turn it over. All right, so I have this piece now. And mm -hmm. you know, I would just, because this is already pre-loosened, I would just do that, just drop it. Put it like that, it's sometimes it's kind of hard. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, kind of tough. There we go. And we land your grain and you close it and then you're done. Shake it up. Yeah, shake it up to spread the mycelium. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it for our guys to grain transfer. Wow. Yep. And then, you know, let me show. So this is an OTR. This is blue oysters from 12, 22. So that's like almost two months. So it's kind of like all wow. over. Yeah. So it's, it's going to look like this. You know, not this bad just because this is, I just let it sit for like two months. <laughs> but it's, it's gonna, it's gonna yeah. start slowly turning white and you know, spreading all of the grains. That's some examples actually. And you keep it in a dark place or refrigeration Wait, or. Uh, can you repeat that? We, we kind of lost connection at first. Oh, yeah. Um, so, the jar of the oysters you had earlier, do you, did you keep it in a dark room or in the refrigerator or? No, I just keep it at room temp. Just at room room temp. temp, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is something that was inoculated um, on the first, right? Yeah, on, um, yeah, so four days ago. And so you see how the grains, I mean, the agar pieces, the mycelium is jumping off yeah. onto the grains. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so so mm -hmm. after a while, it's gonna, I'm gonna let it like colonize maybe like 30% of the grains. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shake it up to mix it up. So like, mm -hmm. it's gonna colonize it back quicker. So once it take mm -hmm. over like one single piece of grain, that becomes an inoculation point for the whole bag. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can see like there's probably like a thousand inoculation points here. So that's really good. That's why we use grains just because this it's fine it's like it's smaller and it, it spread faster mm -hmm. yeah. and then also food for the mycelium yeah and that's that's all i'm gonna probably do for the lab portion cool so do you have any questions ava mm -hmm. cool well let's see so so the idea is people are going to take their own uh petri dish home and try to, um, and then find some grain and then try to grow their own, right? Yeah, that's basically the idea. Uh, yeah, actually, I forgot one more thing. So after the grain fully colonized, uh, uh, we're gonna add it to a bag. This is called a substrate. It's a mycelium block, but- um, Substrate we're gonna. Yeah, so this is this is what they use at farms to grow mushrooms. It's mm -hmm. the inside is um, sawdust. So we go from agar to grain, and then to the sawdust substrate, and that's how you get mushrooms cool. in, in a farm. So, so after the grain is fully colonized, we just add the fully colonized bottle of grains to a bag of um, sawdust substrate or whatever you know you want, but mostly they use sawdust. Um, and then you just let it colonize. This, this is inoculated on the 25th. 
So it's about mm-hmm. seven days. It's longer than seven days. I mean, probably a little bit over a week. So you can see how the mycelium like took over the whole block. And, you know, probably in like a day or two, I'm going to cut a hole for the mushrooms to come out. Because once it's exposed mm-hmm. to air, um, the mushrooms know where to form when, when, it, when the air hit, hit it. So it's going to come out from here. Like, you know, when you buy like grow kits, like it's going to, they tell you to like cut the bag for the mushrooms to come out. So that, that's how it works. So I'm probably going to bring like a bag of, mm-hmm. you know, sawdust just so they can see, you know, how to do like a, a grain to mm-hmm. substrate. So I can make copies. So what you need to do is send me like, um, and I think you sent me something, but you can send me like a list of, you know, materials. Okay. Um, and maybe where they can purchase them or make them, you know, little step-by-step recipes of each, you know, yeah. each aspect. Yeah. yeah. But it, I, I feel like it is a lot of information for, for people to learn. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have the list. But I feel like they're not gonna. They're not gonna yeah. get into it. I think. I think right. once we explain to them that they can kind of use whatever grains at their disposal, and then pretty much explain to them the basic step process. Right? You're gonna tell them about soaking the grain and yeah, oh uh, yeah, and then cooking it. So I think they should pretty much get the understanding from the class, right? Yeah, you don't really need to have a list of things <laughs> yeah, because how many things you can use i don't want to like limit it and then they yeah. just think you have to buy it one mm-hmm. thing you know mm-hmm. but um this is just like a basic you know technique stuff and you know the science of why we do what we do um, mm-hmm. and then i'll have to, like some things they can read more about it because because this is not like a, a class just to show them how to grow but right. let's get the basic understanding of you know how mushroom farmers do it Mm-hmm. Right. Resources, so, so you're going to have a, a PowerPoint that starts before the yeah, lab part, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, are, we, are we able to do a PowerPoint? Once in you have it room? set up. Yeah, that's the question. Um, I've been talking to Ethan, and he, he might bring his, uh, his computer, not his laptop, but his desktop, and he might be able to do everything from his uh, recorder where he can go on Zoom and at the same time record. I don't know how that, that happens, but I think he's familiar with that because um, the main problem with switching from PowerPoint to live demo, um, well, I guess we share the screen for the PowerPoint and then you, you unshare it and then we can see you know, yeah. you but, doing the protocol. What- what what about the other people in the class? We don't want them to kind of crowd around his computer. So can we use the overhead projector in the other um, room? Oh, that's gonna be yeah. See, all these things need to be worked out. Yeah. So I think well, we I mean, can, we could do the PowerPoint in the Oak Room, and then yeah, if, maybe, if that's cool, yeah. We, we, yeah, I from what do, I like, see, the PowerPoint. In the yeah. room, and then once we're finished with the PowerPoint, we'll just migrate to the lab, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, because or or just yeah, we can do the lab in the oak room because it doesn't look like it requires a lot of, you know, sinks or anything like that. Sure. But, okay, so whatever is easier. I just wanted to make sure we get access to the overhead projector so we could put the um. The actual PowerPoint on there for everybody to sit in the class and kind of watch and you know. Right, and the main the main issue was we had to end up using Elizabeth's computer. Right, and she told me like uh, from now on she'll let me go in the building by myself and we set it up. But I think she might be available on the nineteenth. Sure. Um, well, well, but at I the think- same time, we should be able to do everything without her. Yeah, we, we might need to look at uh, any of the adapters, right, that she had, and if we need any adapters for ACMI mm-hmm. connection, right, so we can make sure that it, we got the connection for the ACMI to the power projector. Yeah, I think uh, I think Ethan said he, he can do that. He has all that. Okay. Cool. So. Um, well, if you don't have any more questions for Pran, I think I'm just gonna turn this off now. Yeah, that's. Thank you very much for sharing that. So. 
Yeah, if you can, not whenever you're ready to send me materials that I can make a, a copy for the people attending and it also be available for the people that are watching it on Zoom. And I'm, I'm hoping the people that are watching it on Zoom will get something out of it. Yeah. You know. But I mean, we, um, I'm just gonna try. I'll probably do like a demo for them just outside this new air box. So it's easier for them to see. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just throw those plates right. away because they're not contaminated, but um, just so they can see better. Right. And yeah. your class might be one of those classes that you might want to repeat, like every three months, do it so that different people can try it. Yeah. Live. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be good doing that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks All right. a lot well, for thank time, you. Huh? And I look thank forward you. to it. All right. Bye. 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 Uh, see you later. Bye. See you later.